Religious rights groups say they've recorded over 200 such incidents since the ouster of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. The new cabinet said it would immediately engage with communities and their representatives to find a solution. Hindus are the largest minority faith in the country, which is predominantly Muslim, and many of them are supporters of Sheikh Hasina's party. Saima Islam is a journalist with the newspaper Taka Star. Welcome. How widespread have attacks on minorities in Bangladesh been since the fall of the old regime? Thank you for the question. Um, I'm a reporter with the Daily Star. And uh, so it's more than that. It's it's right now, it's it's the culture of fear that um, a certain minority groups might be living in that uh, I think is uh, what's more pressing is that when, you know, the government fell and uh, uh, we have a hope for a new government, a new Bangladesh, the minorities seem to be a bit of an afterthought in this, uh, other- uh, you know, the proceedings. The other problem is that independent information on these attacks has been hard to get. What role is misinformation playing at the moment? While the minorities themselves are fearing uh, uh, for, are fearing to speak out, uh, at the same time, India, and especially um, Hindutva right-wing groups in India, are really tweeting, um, uh, they've really taken up uh, you know, the, uh, this issue, and they are, uh, some of the things that they're tweeting out are not necessarily Correct. Mm-hmm. For example, we've noticed that they've uh, well, there was this one right wing Twitter account that um, tweeted out a photo of uh, our cricketer Mashrafi bin Montaza's house being set on fire and said that it was a minority cricketer's house being set on fire, whereas uh, Mashrafi bin Montaza is actually an Awami League parliamentarian, was an Awami League parliamentarian. So uh, there are those you know things that they are really capitalizing on the scenario. This is, I think that's also a bit of their foreign policy. That's also a bit of how they perceive Bangladesh. They're perceiving Bangladesh as a, as a, as a place where minority groups are not safe. And I'm not saying that we have done our best in the past few days in protecting our minority groups. But at the same time, I think the kind of um, messaging that's being pushed out of, say, right, certain right wing groups in India is not necessarily a reflection of the truth. It's more their fears that they're playing into. Let's move on to the political shift that's underway. The son of the ousted PM warned over the weekend that the Awami League, Sheikh Hasina's party, should not be excluded from politics in Bangladesh. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. You're not going to be able to establish democracy in Bangladesh without the Awami League. It will never be accepted by half the people of the country, at least. So just as with the BNP, it's going to be between the BNP and Awami League. We need to work together together. We are willing to meet with anyone, talk with anyone to restore democracy, to ensure peace, to restore law and order. So, Zaina, how is the transitional government dealing with representatives of the old regime? At the moment, the transitional government is not necessarily engaging with representatives of the old regime is what we have seen. I do want to say that it's only been less than a week. It's not even been a week yet. And they've... uh, You know, they've had their hands full trying to bring back control to a country that has had that had completely fallen apart at the seams. So, for example, they're trying to get the police to come back to the police stations and uh, the police did rejoin work today. Some of the police stations have become operational starting today. Um, They're trying to get uh, protesters to not necessarily stop protesting, but also to bring a, sem- a semblance of normalcy back to the streets. And I think at this point, uh, uh, communicating with the old regime has not necessarily been, at, you know, their their topmost priority. They're, they are, uh, in fact, they're, um, instead, instead of that, they're actually looking more towards reform, which means uh, they're trying to see places, they're trying to reform places, for example, the, the Supreme Court, where where, you know, the previous regime might have installed um, people of their own. They're trying to reform places where the previous mm-hmm. regime had really infiltrated and, and politicized institutions. Saima, thank you very much for your analysis and bringing us up to date on that story.